Well, Brock, if last weekend and last Monday was so much fun for people living in Seattle, especially the sports fans with every team winning, this week exactly the opposite. The pit of despair for both the Huskies on Saturday and then the Seahawks yesterday. And Pete Carroll pretty honest with us as he was with the media after the game. It's rather simple. When you look at that game film, you weren't physically dominated in this game. And, and Denver, I don't think, is going to be a really good team as this year progresses. And it was the little things. It was the fatal errors that you induced yourself, your penalties, your false starts, your holds, critical turnovers, two interceptions inside the 10. You look at the film, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, and Pete was pretty honest with us, to figure out exactly what went wrong. And now the question is, can they fix that and not repeat those mistakes? You gotta find a way to get the other team off the field. And at one point they failed on 14 of 16 opportunities to get the Broncos off the field. You simply can't win a game when you do that and you turn the ball over four times on the road, not with this team, not with this talent level on this roster. That's not going to happen. Also talk to Pete Carroll. You can hear directly from him. That's on the podcast at 920. Meanwhile, the Huskies, worse. If the Seahawks game had some positive that you could take out of it, the defensive line, the offensive line, the running game, the fact that they were in the game, at least for most of it until the end, I don't know what you can possibly take positively out of the Huskies game. They got waxed at home and look bad in doing it. I think you said that pretty well. <laughs> yeah, they got physically dominated. There's very little positive whatsoever. Your offense didn't execute. It got squeezed all day long. You didn't see Jake really respond in a positive way and build up the guys around him defensively. He had a true freshman starting in middle linebacker. Good luck against Nebraska in that front. So in every way, shape, and form, that was a whooping. And I guess the only good news, Mike, is they have a bye week to hopefully get guys healthy and look at that film and say, this is where you need to be. This is a top five team in the country. Physically and otherwise, it's where you got to get to. So if anything, for the young guys that are playing, it's a measuring stick of how far they have yet to go. Not good when a bye week is the number one positive thing you can take out of a game. Of course, a lot of the questions now are going to turn to Jake Locker. 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, we will ask the question, what do you do with Jake Locker now? How do you coach him going forward? Do you make him run more? Do you let him pass more? How does that work? We'll ask that question at 9 a.m. Check out the podcast for the entire show, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.